To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To give somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright most likely thinking about with a flip is what is my current financial situation if I've got tons of cash then I don't really need to do this flip right now and if I think this flip is dangerous then I might not do it but if I'm really light on cash and I need to get some money coming in and maybe I got some big expenses coming like some tax bills like Halloween for example I get hit with a massive amount of tax bills from all these real estate pieces that I own where the taxes aren't escrowed in the mortgage payment. So I get hit with, you know, a massive amount of tax bills that are due to all these different counties. And ho so Halloween is a scary time for me, a very scary time. So I might do a flip right now just because I know that if I could work on the thing now and maybe get it sold sometime around Halloween, I could really use the money at that time. So that's just a, a few ideas about it's not just a mathematical formula when you're trying to analyze a piece of real estate. It's like, what is going on in your life? What are you going to do with this house? How do you feel about this house? And all those other factors that we mentioned. What's your current financial situation? All those things come into play when you're trying to think about how to analyze a deal. Julian, why don't you, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the, the deals that you've done and how you analyze them. Um, I use a real estate valuating software. It's web-based and I also consult some of my mentors just like you. So I ask you about the deal and, um, and I always do my due diligence and make sure that everything that I'm about to invest in, my money's secure and that I'm going to get a blue positive return. But at the end of the day, like you said, you're going to want to have to either have figure out your exit strategy. Is it going to be, are you going to flip it or is this going to be something that you want to hold on to? And at the end of the day, me personally, since I'm trying to build up my capital, I'm trying to do a lot more flips than holds, but I know for a fact that I'm going to want to build up my rental portfolio within the next year or two, so, uh, so I can start getting like you. So we have a lot of other ways that we look at doing deals where we can say, you know, is it a good keep, is it a good flip, and a lot of times we'll have the deal dictate what we're going to do with it. But one of the things that you really should look at should look at when you're buying a deal is is there multiple exit strategies are you able to are you able to buy it and flip it buy it and rent it because you know what they say about a flip that doesn't flip right it's a good rental <laughs> so you yeah. want you want to make sure that if you have let's say a four hundred thousand dollar house that's on the market like we do right now we actually have one under contract that was a fix and flip well four hundred thousand dollar house if plan a flipping it doesn't work it's really tough to be able to rent that out and make any money. So the only thing you really have to do is to market it better, reduce the price, things like that. If you're buying a first time home buyer house, in that case, you could, you could always rent it, you could rent to own it, you can, you can fix and flip it, you can do all, all these things. So uh, that's something I would caution you as you're looking to analyze a deal, try to find one that has multiple exit strategies. That's so. good advice, that's good advice. The one thing I'd like to say uh, before we move on to the next question is you mentioned that the deal kind of dictates what you're going to do with it. And that's really critical. Uh, most of the time, the deal will tell you what the highest and best use for that particular deal is. You're going to find some house that's uh, a $300,000 house, and you're not going to fix that thing up and turn it into a rental. It's too expensive of a house. It's going to automatically be a flip. But you might find a $100,000 house that you would never think of keeping and, and never really want to be involved in renting it, but it's a good thing to wholesale. So a lot of times the house does dictate to you uh, exactly what it is that you should be doing with it, its highest and best use. So let's get on to our next question. The next question is, how do I assemble a team? What do you think about that, Jeremy? Well, let's talk about um, what, what the, that team should look like, what members of the team you should have. If you're in the in the acquisition business, you certainly need to have people that help you do the marketing. You have to have people that help you with the financing, finding those deals, financing the deals. So you need to have a, a hard money lender, or a private lender, or a, some you know maybe you have a line of credit. You have to assemble some financing source. Also on your team, you need to have a, a real estate agent. That somebody that's addicted to real estate would be good. <laughs> somebody that works with investors. And at Addicted to Real Estate, that's what we specialize in. We have real estate agents that work specifically with investors. 
So you can go to some big box agency and, and possibly find somebody that has dealt with investors, but that's what we specialize in. So if you are thinking about getting into real estate investing or you are a real estate investor, you can number one, get your license and hang it in our office, an investor friendly office. Or you could just use one of our agents as, as a, a team member for your, your own team, somebody that understands real estate deals like we do. In fact, we don't really know traditional deals because we're not a traditional agency. So check it out, it's uh, a2re.com, A, the number two, re.com, that's for Addicted to Real Estate. So check out that website and uh, find somebody. We can introduce you to somebody that we think would be a good fit for you on your team. You also need to have contractors, handymen. Uh, the one advice I'll give you about finding, assembling a good team is once you find a good contractor, ask them for their referral for other contractors. So let's say you have a good plumber and the plumber has got great prices and he works well and he's fast and he gets the job done and he's dependable. What you do is you ask that plumber for an electrician because he's going to be on other job sites with other contractors. He's going to know who the people is, number one, that he likes dealing with, which is important, right? You have a couple guys all working on the same job site, they're going to be stepping all over each other. If, well, if they like the person that they're stepping all over, they'll be okay with that. <laughs> so, uh, so always ask your, your contractors for, for other contractors. And then, you know, as, what other what other team members do you think Phil would be uh, somebody that you know you have you have the real estate agent that you can li buy through and sell with. You certainly can find deals off the market. You have a finance guy. You have a, a contractor team, accountant, and attorneys. Those are good. Yeah, I'd like to know. Uh, let's take you know Julian, who's a new investor. Who's on your team so far? Is there anyone on your team that you got so far? <laughs> Yeah, so I have a real estate agent. Um, shout out to Carlos. I have uh, my two mentors, Phil and Jeremy. And uh, I also have uh, a couple contractors that I, I know I'm going to potentially start doing work with them. Um, and then I also just have a group of other like-minded people. I feel like that's the biggest part for me be because if you're into real estate and you're, you're starting out new, it's, it's good to surround yourself with people who are experienced and years ahead of you, and also who are going, the pe these are the people who you can bounce ideas off of and then ask if you're going in the right direction so you don't make mistakes and um, you know, th everyone will help each other out. So I, I always go to different meetings. Um, the Addicted to Real Estate meeting is the one I go to. I go to a few other ones uh, in addition, but at the end of the day, I want to always surround myself with other people who are investors who have the same mindset as me so I can continue to grow and they can grow with me as well. You know, I got a shout out to Carlos too. Carlos, come and see me. I want to talk to you about <laughs> joining Addicted to Real Estate. <laughs> You we're, should. <laughs> we're mentoring a, your, your client here, and uh, we don't want to steal him from you. We want you to just come and hang with us. So give us a call. 267-988-2000. Anybody out there who's thinking about getting their real estate license, guess what we do? We pay for your schooling. So your school costs are going to be pretty minimal, under $500. But if you're going to come and hang your license at Addicted to Real Estate, we will pay for your schooling. How do you like that deal? And if you're a real estate investor who's even thinking of buying one house a year or one house every two years, your license will essentially be free, meaning that all of the costs associated with having your license will be recouped with just one deal done every two years on average. That's a no-brainer for me. So if you're going to do any kind of real estate deal, you should have a real estate license. And if you're an investor, there is no investor-friendly agency out there except for Addicted to Real Estate Agency. 267-988-2000. <laughs>